Hi everyone. This morning we will be talking about the mind our greatest asset. It's so good to connect with you like this through this channel. We have just been through a series on the mind. It's salvation, getting rid of the old man, putting on the new God redeemed our minds through the work of the cross so that he could use it to bring great transformation to our lives and our cities and glory to himself how does god do it and why is our mind such a great asset Stay tuned for the answer. Aggie and I have a deep God-given passion to serve people, the depressed, the broken-hearted, the spiritually needy. Help them lay a firm foundation of the word in their lives and see them walk out of their problems through the application of God's word and into everything that God has called them to and has planned for them before we get into the content of this video if you haven't already subscribed to this channel please consider doing so and click the bell icon right by it so that you can be notified each time we post a new video let us pray father we thank you we bless your holy name father we recognize all your blessings that you give us we thank you for all the work that you are doing in our lives and through our lives father Today we give ourselves to you so that you can pour yourself into us and out through us to others. We set our minds to be open to revelation and understanding and that we may receive enlightenment in Jesus' mighty name. In my last 7 videos I talked at length about the battle that we face in our minds. Getting rid of all the clamoring voices trying to get our attention and the resulting confusion brought us to a place of peace and quiet in our minds. After which we looked at the journey of putting on the mind of christ god took great pains to carve out freedom for our minds the crown of thorns on jesus head was symbolic of the torment we suffer the battle was so intense that we could barely stay afloat and overcome the negative tendencies but now that we have been delivered in our minds we are free to explore the tremendous creativity of our minds wow proverbs 23:7a says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he this is a powerful eye opening truth from the word our thoughts are highly creative and they are working to create in us for the better or worse depending on their content on the content of what we think most of us have struggled with negativity which puts a glass ceiling over all our efforts but now 
having applied the work of the cross to our minds and to our thinking we are now free to go and use the amazing power of our creative minds someone has said remember it is an absolute law of your being that you must have something mentally before you will ever have it physically think about this for it is just what proverbs 23:7a says when joshua became the leader and was saddled with the responsibility of leading the people of israel into the promised land after moses all god commanded him to do was to meditate in his word and be obedient the commands of god are always for our good that's what deuteronomy 10 and verse 13 tells us it says to keep the commandments of the lord and his statutes which i command thee this day for thy good the commandments of god are always for our good it is in obeying god that he reveals to us the secrets of his ways now through meditation joshua allowed god's word to fill his mind and his imagination which is exactly what god wanted so that he could direct him Psalm 103 and verse 7 says He made known his ways unto Moses his acts unto the children of Israel The children of Israel were content to know the deeds and mighty works of the Lord Like most Christians they are seeking his miracles and his healings but we need to be like moses who knew god's ways his principles and his laws so that we can give god access to our lives to rule and reign in and through us god is the ruler of the whole world and he wants to express his directional power through his people that is us but there was the problem of disobedience and the lord had to first deal with that problem right through the scriptures we find god wooing his people always calling them back to himself back to obedience but his people just would not finally paul tells us that god decided to do something about it hebrews 8:10 says for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days saith the lord i will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people now in hebrews 8:10 god decided to make a new covenant and this time he would not just command his people to obey him but he would actually help and enable them to obey so that they would then be his people and he would be their god and how would god do this this verse tells us that he would put his laws into their minds and write them in their hearts once that was done they would be enabled the problem of their disobedience would have been been solved now hebrews 10:16 says 
This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. In Hebrews 10, 16, Paul writes the same thing, but in a slightly different way. It says, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. It's just the opposite of Hebrews 8, 10. The Lord wants his word lodged in our hearts and in our minds. For he knows that if his word finds its way into our hearts and minds, that our lives would change accordingly and he would indeed be and they would indeed be his people and he our God. The Lord wants to write his laws on our hearts and minds to change us. We need to know that we function under a specific law which says that in order to have something physically we need to first have it mentally. God created us that way. That is what Proverbs 23, 7 a says. For as he thinketh in our hearts, so is he. Thinking will always precede being or becoming. Paul in Hebrews 8, 10 and Hebrews 10, 16 is referring to what the Lord spoke to the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 33, where it says, Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was to them an husband, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their inward parts and in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, as we look at the context of these verses, we will understand why the Lord had to speak these promises to this prophet. God had to deal with the polluted imagination of man. Let us begin with Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The scriptures connect man's wickedness to his evil imagination. When God saw that the thoughts and imaginations of man was continually evil, he knew that only wickedness would proceed out of man. And so God decided to destroy mankind, saving only Noah and his family who alone were righteous. Now God created Adam in his own image and likeness. Just like God is an uncreated creator, he created man to be a created creator. And this creative ability is in his imagination. With the fall in Genesis 3, the enemy gained access to his mind and imagination. When we look at that first temptation and the attack of Satan, we see that it was aimed at the imagination of Eve. 
in genesis 3 1 he used words the enemy used words he spoke to her genesis 3 1 says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman yea hath god said he shall not eat of every tree of the garden when eve repulsed him with god's word even though it was not very accurate the enemy would have pointed to the fruit and said his piece in verse 5 where it says for god doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil and in genesis 3 6 he goes on to say when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat as soon as eve saw the fruit in verse 6 she was undone for it grabbed her imagination now when god gave the command to adam and eve had she meditated in that word in that command she would have held an image of that fruit in her imagination with a big do not written all over it the image of the fruit with a big do not written across it would have protected her in her temptation but the enemy managed to plant the image of what he wanted her to do in her imagination and as soon as she saw the fruit it appealed to her eyes which was the second emphasis on the image of the fruit producing desire now the enemy knows that we will always move in the direction of our most dominant desire and that is exactly what eve did she took of the fruit and ate with sin entering satan gained access to our minds and our imagination this is the same strategy that the enemy employs when he tempts us james talks about this strategy in james 1 14 where it says but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed that is why we must guard our imagination for it is powerful and creative coming back to genesis 6 5 we can conclude that we will do whatever captivates our imagination and so when god saw that the imagination of man was continually evil he brought on the flood to destroy him saving just noah and his family it is amazing to see how god saved noah and his family using his imagination in genesis 6 13 and 14 god calls noah and tells him to build an ark of gopher wood with rooms in it and to pitch it within and without with pitch he then gives him further details of the ark now god's provision for noah and his family's escape from the flood came to him through a word a promise from god which is unseen 
and spiritual. The precise instructions to build the ark came from the mind of God to the mind of Noah, painting a picture on the canvas of his imagination. The word picture helped Noah to see what God wanted and he started out to build it. Now it is amazing that Noah did not argue with God, saying that it was impossible, that it had never been done before. And surely no one would have blamed him if he had done that for a boat, had, no, had never been seen or conceived, let alone build one. The fact that Noah did finally build the ark tells us as someone so has so rightly put it, that principle always triumphs over precedent. The Lord had just introduced Noah and mankind to the power of visualization, which works as a law. The Lord God created man with the power to see and imagine and the picture that we visualize in our imagination is the beginning of the creative action. Noah would have looked long and hard at the picture that the Lord had helped him to see and visualize, wondering how he could build such a thing. And as he did this faithfully every day. Ideas would have come to him till he came to the place where he finally said, let's build ourselves an ark. Scholars are quite agreed upon the fact that the ark would have taken about 60 to 70 years in building. Let us look at the process again of how Noah built this ark. The Lord spoke a word that Noah received in his mind and then in his imagination. As I just said, the picture in the imagination is the beginning of the creative action. As Noah visualized, ideas came to him and he decided to make the ark and so probably said, let's build ourselves an ark. Noah spoke and thereafter would have kept speaking the ark into existence as he instructed those who helped him build, as he sat to explain to others what he was doing and why, he would have shared the prophetic word that the Lord spoke to him about the flood that was to come, that people would have laughed at him and disbelieved, did not deter him. For the word of the Lord was lodged in his imagination. And so finally, what the Lord spoke and Noah saw in his mind and imagination and then finally declared with his mouth, came into being and was a means of escape for Noah and his family. It was God's provision of salvation from the flood. As we have said, God is the ruler of the world, whole world. And he wants to express his directional power through his people. But there was a problem of disobedience and the Lord had to first deal with it. Paul tells us that God decided to do something about it. We looked at Hebrews 8.10 and Hebrews 10.16 where we saw how God decided to make a new covenant through which he would write his laws on their minds and put it in their hearts. 
and then they would be enabled to obey him wonderful paul quoted these verses from jeremiah 31 31 to 33 we then began to look at the context of these verses starting with genesis 6:5 which said that the mind and imagination of man was only evil continually we saw how the enemy gained access into the mind and imagination of man and polluted it in genesis chapter 3 Then we saw how God sent the flood and destroyed mankind but he made a way of escape for Noah and his family using Noah's imagination The next time we will continue to dwell on man's mind and imagination which is man's greatest asset Be sure you don't miss it If you would like to support this channel and help us reach more people with God's truth one of the best ways that you could do that is by tapping the subscribe button and sharing it with others God bless you as you do Amen